welcome and thank you for joining us here today as we release the 2019 Labor Day Report to Montanans. As the uh, former Deputy Director of the Montana Department of Labor and Industry, I recognize how much work by staff at the department goes into researching Montana's economy and producing a report that contains a wealth of knowledge useful to Montanans. We are all better able to work together, public, private, and educational sectors, in guiding our state to a prosperous future with the information contained in this report. We also release this report annually on the heels of Labor Day to serve as recognition of the incredible contributions of the working women and men of Montana. The work ethic, commitment, and entrepreneurial spirit of the working people of Montana is unmatched anywhere in the nation. This ethic is something we see both in our current workforce and as we educate and prepare a future workforce to someday but to be the leaders of our businesses, government, and industry sectors. We rely on Montana's trained and skilled workforce as the very engine that drives our economy. And, it also, and it's also our workforce that keeps us moving forward as we strive for even better workplaces and economic livelihoods all throughout our state. So thank you to the working folks of Montana, not just for your contributions today, but far into our state's future. Before I turn, the, uh, turn to the next speaker, I'd like to share that following the speaking portion of this event, the Trades Division Chair, Tammy Burke, will be providing a tour for the media and guests of the Helena College Airport Campus. Uh, this will be a great opportunity to see some of Montana's bright students in action as they prepare for their future careers. Our next speaker will be discussing an exciting partnership called the Montana Youth Apprenticeship Partnership. As part of this partnership, Montana received a highly competitive grant in May from the Partners, Partnership to Advance Youth Apprenticeship. Only nine grants were awarded nationwide from a pool of over 220. With this grant, we'll be piloting youth apprenticeship programs in Helena and Billings. Government leadership, education leadership, and business leadership in the healthcare and IT industries will be engaging with high school juniors and seniors who wish to seek careers in these fields. We look forward to seeing the outcomes that will result. It's now my honor to turn it over to Dean and CEO of Helena College, Dr. Laura Vesepka. Following Dean Vesepka's, Commissioner Hollenbaugh will present the 2019 Labor Day Report to Governor Bullock. Thank you again for being here, and Dean Vesepka. Governor Bullock, um, Commissioner Hollenbaugh, for being here, distinguished guests. We are thrilled to be able to host the presentation of the 2019 Labor Day Report right here on our airport campus. You see, it's the mission of Helena College to provide access to and support of high quality, lifelong educational opportunities, and we do this best when we are responsive to the community's needs. We are constantly working to find innovative ways to engage with our partners to promote student success. One exciting new opportunity for such partnership you just heard about, which is the Montana Youth Apprenticeship Partnership, which we call MyApp. Through the efforts of American Jobs for America's Youth, Helena has been chosen as one of, as you heard, only a handful of recipients to be funded um, by Partnership to Advance Youth Apprenticeships. The grant's gonna support new partnerships between local employers, educators, both K-12 and higher ed, community partners such as Helena Wins, and policy leaders to build quality youth apprenticeship programs that promote inclusive economic development, create new opportunities for young people, and strengthen the talent pipeline. Apprenticeship has always been a compelling model for meeting both current and emerging workforce needs. The strength of the Maya apprenticeship model is that it allows us to consider the needs of Montana's employers without compromising the educational goals of Montana's youth. Helena College is so proud to be a post-secondary partner for MyApp. 
But the MyUp model is much bigger than just our partnership. It brings us all to the table to create new educational programs. And we have to build on the individual strengths of the community stakeholders. And this will then lead to educational partnerships and experiences that are far, far greater than the sum of their parts. Here at Helena College, we know this model works. The Helena College Automotive Technology Program is the perfect example of the power of the 21st century apprenticeship. Our students take classes on this campus in the morning and then work in local businesses as paid apprentices in the afternoons. By the end of this two-year program, the students will have completed an Associates of Applied Science degree and they will have completed eight Automotive Service Excellence or ASE exams and they will have amassed 1,000 hours of work-based experience. Our aim is to give them a huge career boost in a field that can require up to 10 years of experience to reach master technician status. And this program does that. Look, don't get me wrong, I've been in higher ed my whole life and the classroom experience is great, but nothing can match on the job experience. One additional perk to the apprenticeship model is that employers and students can find their best fit what specific area of the industry is the best one for them. In automotive technology alone, there are independent shops, corporate shops, fleet shops, and all have different approaches to work. And students in an apprenticeship style program have the chance to see and even experience all those differences. This exploration is a unique component of the apprenticeship model. Of course, while apprenticeship opportunities are the gold standard for trades, there's no reason to stop there. As you heard, through our work with Maya, we're going to be exploring the same model for the high demand areas of healthcare and information technology. We all understand that workforce demands are constantly changing and that a college education has to prepare students, not just for jobs now, but also develop the schools that they need to continue to be um, successful in the future. We know that most of the jobs in the current IT sector didn't even exist 10 years ago. This is a reality for today's student and today's worker, and we have a responsibility to prepare students for a fast pace of change in their field. We're not alone in this focus. We are, at Helena College are working with our partners in the University of Montana system, as well as key local, national, and international leaders in the tech industry to enhance existing programs and also create new programs that will prepare workers for very high wage and very high demand careers. Ultimately, we want all Montana students and their families to understand that post-secondary, that post-high school education or post-secondary education should be the next logical step as they prepare for a long and meaningful career. Helena College is uniquely positioned to offer excellent instruction in both current skills and also professional, or as some call them, soft skills, and lifelong learning skills, meeting current employment demands without compromising future earning potential. So I'm sure that you can see why I think it's so fitting to have our governor here today to share the very report that highlights Montana's economic growth and workforce initiatives. Helena College is Helena's college. We understand and embrace our responsibility to the community. Our core themes of student access and success, high quality education and community enrichment mean we thrive when the community thrives. We're committed to providing resources and programs that can enhance the skills of current workers and offer the pathway for a new skill set and career. You'll see just how committed we are to this goal when our Chair of Trades, Tammy Burke, who's back in the corner, takes you through our fantastic facility and you get to see our world-class faculty and students hard at work. But before that, I'll give the podium to Commissioner Hollenbaugh, who will introduce the governor. But thank you for joining us here today and welcome to Helena College. Well, thank you, Dean Pasepka, uh, and to the Helena College folks for hosting us here today. And of course, thank you to everyone who has joined us here as we roll out the 2019 Labor Day Report. Governor Bullock, Lieutenant Governor Cooney, the 2019 Labor Day Report shows the continued strength of the Montana economy and our ability to respond to our workforce challenges. In the last fiscal year, the Department of Labor and Industry has delivered career and training services to over 47,000 Montanans. We're doing this in part with programs and services like registered apprenticeship, on-the-job training, and incumbent worker training. We've also partnered with 5,000 Montana businesses to connect them with skilled workers, as well as providing some technical assistance to help them grow their businesses. 
In addition, we are expanding our partnership with the Office of the Commu uh, Commissioner of Higher Education and the Montana University System to reach out to the approximately 125,000 Montanans who have some college credit but no college degree or certificate. We're doing that to help them re-enroll in, in the process so that they can try and see some economic gain throughout uh, the completion of or attainment of their degree or certificate. Now as Commissioner, it's great to see the commitment that's been shown by all Montanans uh, to grow our economy. And I truly appreciate the leadership and support Governor Bullock has shown in addressing our challenges and moving the state forward. So Governor, we're excited to highlight Montana's successes and I'm pleased to share with you this 2019 Labor Day Report. Thank you, Commissioner Hollenbaugh, and thank all of you for being here. I want to thank uh, the good doctor and Helena College for sharing the good work that you're doing to connect folks with in-demand and good-paying jobs. This is now the seventh time as governor I've had the honor of getting to receive and then present uh, the annual Labor Day report. Often we ask Montanans from our private, public, or education sectors to join us in this effort. We do so as a recognition that the economy isn't just about a few individuals or entities. It's about the Montanans all across our state who come together and share a commitment to making our state what it is. It's about the nurses who work day and night to care for Montanans in need. It's about the construction workers who ensure we have safe infrastructure for learning and living. It's about the farmers and the ranchers who do the hands-on labor to feed our world. It's about teachers and professors and administrators who know that the most important thing that we can do for our economy is invest in that workforce of not only today, but also the workforce of the future. Or as we highlighted in releasing last year's report, it's about manufacturers who contribute to our food and beverage industry and even Montana's blooming microbrewery culture. We don't get to enjoy a tasty beer like we did when we announced at uh, Labor Day Report last year, but this event does hold um, an extra special significance, being it in the lecture hall of Helena College's airport campus. Montana's economy holds and provides so many incredible opportunities. Ones that will benefit the future workforce learning in the classrooms around us here today. We also know that the challenges before us involve making sure that we have that talented and trained workforce to take the reins in industries all across our state. And we know what steps we have to take to address what really is a workforce shortage. On the heels of Labor Day, I am pleased to get to receive Montana's 2019 Labor Day Report. In this report, uh, we mark the longest economic expansion in recorded U.S. history, a decade since the recession ended in June of 2009. Over the past decade, Montana has added over $6.3 billion in real gross domestic product, $11.6 billion in personal income. We've added 46,000 jobs since the end of the last recession. Our labor force is currently the largest in our state's history. Average annual wages have increased by $10,000 from 2009 to 2018, amounting to the sixth fastest annual wage or growth in annual wages in our country. That's real money going to Montana's pocketbooks and helping them be better off financially. That rapid wage growth pushed Montana to be number one in the nation for median household income growth from 2016 to 2017, the last recorded year that we have so far, growing at nearly two and a half times the national average. Our educated population is benefiting from our economy. We rank third in the country for the percent of the population over age 25 with a high school diploma or the equivalent equivalency. And roughly 65% of our population has some post-secondary education. Women are benefiting from our economy. 
Since we formed the Equal Pay for Equal Task, Equal Work Task Force in 2013, women's earnings have increased by roughly 2.6% annually. That increase in medium earnings for full-time, year-round working Montana women is the fifth fastest in our nation. Montana continues to foster entrepreneurialism. We have the highest rate of business ownership among households in the nation. We rank 14th among states for business startups in our country. As we continue adding jobs to our economy, as wages continue to grow, and as Montanans continue to create homegrown businesses or engage in careers and growing industries, we do have so much to look forward to in our state. And it is indeed the working people of all sectors across Montana who helped, us lead, who helped lead us out of a recession a decade ago and into economic prosperity. Yet we know that with this economic growth, combined with an aging population, our state is experiencing a workforce shortage. It's going to take the ingenuity, hard work, and collective actions of Montanans to guide us through these coming years. I know that Montanans will step up and take the actions we need to now, and in fact, we already are. We also know that we're not alone in having to find creative ways to enhance worker training and help current and future workers gain the experience and knowledge necessary to replace retiring workers. Most of the rest of the country is also facing a similar workforce shortage. That's why over the past year as chair of the National Government Association, I convened states rural, urban, mountain, coast, northeast, southwest to find innovative ways to forge career pathways to current, future, and underemployed workers. The result is a governor's guide which will serve as a model for governors throughout our country in addressing workforce challenges in their states. A link to that guide is also included in our report. And importantly, it shows that we can learn from other states innovative measures to adapt to the changing nature of work. It will also help other states learn from us here in Montana. What we're currently doing and what we hope to do. Our economists in our state have been anticipating this workforce shortage for years. And we've already been putting in place several measures to get a head start on addressing it. We continue to grow the Montana Registered Apprenticeship Program so that workers can get the hands-on training they need in high demand jobs well earning a paycheck. Thinking back to 2013, that year we had 424 new apprenticeships. In 2018, that number more than doubled to 857. Programs also continue to add new occupations. We know that there's about a thousand different apprenticeable fields out there. We added training in 18 new occupations alone last year in 2018, including in high demand fields such as emergency medical technicians, information technology managers, and more. We know that nearly 90% of apprentices graduates work in Montana, making apprenticeships one of the best tools to retain good workers in our state. We also continue to tie, create ties between employers and students through work-based learning opportunities, whether that's offering apprenticeships, internships, or dual enrollment credits. Another critical role that Helena College plays with our local uh, Helena school system. When students have an existing connection to business, they're more likely to remain in Montana after graduation. Creating homegrown talent is certainly one of the best approaches that we can take to ensure a work-ready population, and it's working. Approximately 75% of Montana graduates work in Montana at some point in the five years after graduation. So we're not just exporting our best and brightest, we're getting them jobs right here in the state. We're also making sure that existing workers have the skills they need to find new careers or upskill. Through the Future Ready Cabinet that we convened last year and into this year, we launched the Become an Alum pilot program that Commissioner Hollenbaugh mentioned. In a partnership between the University of Montana and the Department of Labor and Industry, we're assisting Montanans who would like to return to school to complete a degree. We have roughly 125,000 working age Montana residents who have some college credit. 
but indeed no degree. Through this pilot, we've already contacted 3,000 former students, and the first re-enrollees have already started classes this fall. The Department of Labor also provides career and training services to over 47,000 workers this past year to help as they transition at times to new careers. Much of that was done through our unique help link program, which provides career services and workforce training to Montana's Medicaid population. It was also done for workers looking for higher pay or the resume to land a new job. We must also recognize, though, that not everyone is benefiting in this state from our strong economy. And not everyone has access to the resources they need to climb that economic ladder. We have to continue to strive for a state where economic opportunities are available for all those who contribute to our workforce. And it's going to take efforts like this. Partnerships like what we have between private, public, and our educational sectors to make sure that we have a workforce now and indeed in the future. That we can meet the demands for jobs and ensure continued economic prosperity. It's also going to take continued creativity, inventing of new ideas, discovering what other states are doing, and always looking to the future. The most important thing that we can do however, is what we're doing right here. And that's investing in our future leaders. An educated, skilled workforce is what will ensure that Montana remains the best place in the nation to find a career, to work, to live, and to raise a family. As we learn from hearing from the dean, places like Helena College are preparing students. And not waiting until they get to college, but beginning that preparation even in high school to someday fill careers where we need it the most. And that can be everything from automotive to healthcare to IT. We also learn that college students have an opportunity not just to learn in the classroom, but to engage in hands-on training that directly provides the skills used in that actual workplace. It's, that's happening here at Helena College. But it's also happening at campuses all across our state. So thanks again to Helena College for hosting us here today. Thanks to the, the staff and good folks at the Montana Department of Labor and Industry for your hard work in preparing this annual Labor Day report. Our economy is strong on Labor Day 2019. It will continue to be strong in case of folks like you've heard about uh, throughout this presentation, both in this room and across our state. So thanks for coming out today with that. Either the Commission, Lieutenant Governor, Economists, or the Dean and I would have to answer almost any question. <laughs>
economic growth in our tribal nations is like growth in Southwest Montana. So really trying to work to identify both all of the challenges, but indeed all of the opportunities along the way. Challenges can be certainly everything from workforce shortages, housing, lack of childcare, access to connectivity. So I think that part of it is looking at how we can make gains, not just in our urban areas, but also rural areas. You can answer everything you ever said. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, yes, sir. Governor, uh, we, we talk about the low unemployment rate wanting to grow, but we also face a housing crisis in the state as well. How do we address that without the other? You <laughs> Look, in part, it's always a challenge, especially as we see, on the one hand, um, wages starting to increase, it makes it much more possible. But that's another one of the private-public partnerships where our Department of Commerce is always working on building affordable housing at the one end. Then there are moratoriums at this point, at a federal level, on building new affordable housing times, which makes zero sense. But the idea, and ultimately, and, you know, as a kid who grew up here in Helena, and the town used to end about where, boy, I'd say, now, you know, like the Sky High Drive-In was where Murdoch's is. Like, you continue to see growth all over, and that's good from the perspective of what we're seeing as affordable houses, not just being built downtown, but all throughout. But it is something that we need to continue to focus on. Well, I think that, you know, we haven't prepared it as much. It's like if I look at both, um, let's hope, knock on wood, that a recession doesn't occur at some point. It could well, but we now have built up a strong Indian fund balance and rainy day fund. I mean, both in the statutory reserve, I think we have $100 million. In total, we have about $356 million to weather sort of the challenges of an up and down economy. And that's why I think it's great both that where we ended up ultimately at the end of the legislative session. Uh, and let's hope that to the extent that forces beyond the state of Montana impact the state of Montana, that we can still continue to ride strong. Anything else? Well, again, thank you all for coming out. I think there's going to be a tour. There is a tour. It's going to be fantastic. Then I'm better. So, as, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, Tammy Burke, um, is here to take you on a, um, a very well orchestrated, so it will be quick but insightful tour into our facility here. Um, she's got some information sheets you can take along with you so that you can kind of remember what you're seeing, but um, we'll be around if you have any questions at all. Um, Tammy's right back in the corner, and um, she will, she will, you can join her there, and she'll get started. So thanks again, everyone, for being here today, Governor, um, and Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.